got a comment from uh, on my blog from Scott who wanted to know uh, how I did um, this highlight effect on this button from a post a while back. So I'm going to do a quick screencast about how to create and probably something like this one. Um, so let's see here. First thing we do is very simple. First thing we do is create a, a circle with a circle tool. If you don't see anything because it's uh, set to white, but we'll change that color to black and full opacity. There you see it. And hit F1 to select it. And I'm just going to hit Control D and create a duplicate. And I'm going to move it to the side. Again, by holding the control key and dragging, uh, I can move it vertically or horizontally without worrying about it getting misaligned. Uh, so there's the duplicate. Now this is the part kind of Scott was asking about. If you create another shape, and I'm going to use this Bezier tool, and what I try to do is, it's purely a matter of taste, but you create kind of some kind of arbitrary shape. What's important is how does it intersect the curve. Change the color of it here um, to maybe make it a little more visible. Okay, so we've got our black circle and this kind of polygon shape. You could do this with a, you know, a straight line if you wanted. It wouldn't matter. But it's important that the shape be closed, a closed loop. Then what I do is select that shape, um, hold shift and select the black circle here, and then I go to path and intersection. You could hit control and asterisk. So here I'll hit uh, intersection and see how it's just chopped whatever part of the shapes. You see it there again, and when we redo it, the shape uh, that they both share, that part of the shape will be saved. Um, I select that shape, go to my fill tab, and make it white. Then I hold control and drag it back onto my circle. Okay. Get it as. I think there's some kind of snapping turned on. I, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, but it, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of realigning to get it right. And then what I do is. Um, I generally just reduce the opacity of that highlight. Okay, and that's it. Now, if you wanted to do the text part of that, you can create a uh, you know text piece of text here. Say it's A. Hit F1 and, and pick a nice color that you want. Bring it here. Scaled up. Now the benefit of doing this highlight in a layer is that you know this looks okay, but sometimes it's it looks a little bit nicer if you bring that highlight above the text. You do that with when it's selected up, page up, and page down. It may be hard for you to see the difference, but if I made that uh, a lot more opaque, you'd see when I select it up down, and then I can even put it down below the black circle. So you're just adjusting where that highlight layer is. And it should be on top of the text if the text is supposedly on that black circle. The other thing I did in that tutorial was I created a black shadow behind it, and that's really easy. You just select the original black circle again, Control D to duplicate it, page down to send it to the bottom, and then just up the blur a little bit suit your tastes, and there you have it. Now that highlight to me is a little bit too bright. I would probably bring it down something like this. And there you go. And that was it. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, and hopefully the next screencast will be a little bit, uh, a little bit more exciting than this one. Alright, thank you for watching.